I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you why and how to use a noise gate in Reaper. Now this is the fifth video in a series we're doing that focuses on common effects we use in our productions and how to use them in Reaper. But I've made effects videos before. The difference in this series is that I don't want to just focus on how to use these effects, but also why. In this video, we're going to focus on noise gates. A noise gate or a gate is a type of audio effect that is used to control excess noise in an audio signal. When used correctly, a gate will block all unwanted noise while keeping the signal we want. Now, it can't separate the noise that's embedded in our audio. There are more surgical tools for that. Instead, it works based on volume. Assuming the sound you want is louder than the noise you don't. So when the sound goes above the threshold we set, the gate opens, allowing sound to come through. When the sound goes below that threshold, the gate closes, removing the noise we don't want. For this reason, it's great for things like drums, where we want to limit the amount of leakage from other mics. So our kick or snare mics, for example, will only be playing when the kick or snare drum is actually being played or hit. Although, this will also be useful in a live situation, where you wouldn't want to hear the mics on an instrument or vocals unless they were actually performing or singing into that mic. So let's see how it works with drums. I have a drum project right here with a kick, a snare, a pair of overheads, and a pair of room mics. Let's hear it. And if we solo the kick, we could hear the other drums coming through the kick mic, which is known as leakage. Let's solo the snare. We could hear leakage there as well. So let's start with the kick. We'll go to the effects on this track, go to the Reaper effects, and choose the rear gate plugin, which is a noise gate that comes with Reaper. Double click it, and it looks like this. And over here is the threshold. So when the sound goes above the threshold, the gate opens. And when it goes below the threshold, the gate closes. So let's see it on the meter. And let's adjust the threshold. And once again, if the sound is below the threshold, the gate closes, producing no sound. And when it's above the threshold, the gate opens and we hear our track. Notice we don't hear anything because the threshold is too high. So the gate stays closed. Let's hear it in bypass. Now we could also adjust these parameters to affect the gate. The first one is pre-open, which will open the gate a bit early. So we won't cut off our transients. Then we have the attack, which decides how quickly the gate opens. So it can open really quickly or really slow. Let's make it slower or faster. Next, we have the hold and release. Let's start with the hold. 
and like the name suggests, it'll hold the gate open a bit longer, even after the sound goes below the threshold. So let's make it longer and hear it. And the release decides how quickly the gate closes. So it can close really slow or really quick. Let's try a longer release. And the hold and release really work together. So we could hold the gate open for a certain amount of time and then release afterwards. Let's hear it bypassed. Then we have hysteresis. This allows the gate to open at one level and close at a lower level, depending on the hysteresis setting. In this way, it's not constantly flipping between open and closed if the signal is right around the threshold. Let's bring it down and hear it. Then we have the filters. These will allow us to filter our sound completely separately to trigger our gate, which will make it easier if the leakage we're avoiding has certain frequencies in it. And because it's separate, we can preview the filter right here. The low pass filter will filter out the high end and the high pass filter will filter out the low end. And now the filtered sound is going to trigger the gate. But for this, I don't think we need it. Let's move on to the snare. Once again, we'll go to the track effects the Reaper effects, and re -agate. Let's bring up the threshold. Bring up the hold and the release. Let's hear it in bypass. Adjust the hysteresis. And the pre-open to preserve the transients. Adjust the attack. And let's try the filters. We'll readjust the threshold. I don't think we need them on the snare either. Now it's here, all the drums together. Let's bypass the gates and back on.
they sound a lot cleaner and more separate from the other tracks, which will be more useful when we add other plugins like compression and EQ. We won't be compressing or EQing the leakage because we've removed it with gates. So that's pretty much it. That's how and why to use a noise gate in Reaper. Hope you learned something. Hope you can use it. And I'll see you next time. Bingo, boys, let's go.